Listen closely. You're going to get another drunken hug tonight. I don't care what anyone says. You're getting a drunken hug. You too. You too. Drunken hugs are coming tonight. She said, we had five girls. She'd be like, up, up. All y'all get in the shower. Mike. Man, Mike. <laughs> I'm going to come hug you right now. I'm coming to hug you. Big hug. Get out of the love of each other. Now, this the motherfucker did it, though. See, this the motherfucker that did it. <laughs> you think these billionaire men are just hanging out with these black rappers for no reason? A drunken hug tonight. I don't care what anyone says. You're getting a drunken hug. You too. Call Hala Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai, Wahawa Kakwadash. In Hebrew, that's giving all praises to the Most High, Yahweh, in the name of His only begotten Son, Yahweh Shai, and the Holy Spirit, which is the Raka Kodash. Double honors to the elders and apostles, along with the Holy Spirit who taught us His truth. Honors to the brethren that's laboring doing the work to push the gospel, risking their life and freedom to do so. Peace and blessings to the hopeful elect, which will be the one third of the true Israelites who are the true believers among the Negroes, Latinos, Native Americans, and Seminole Indians, who will be the lost 12 tribes who's returning back to Yahweh and Yahweh Shai during these final moments so that he will have mercy on us in judgment. Now, this clip that we just saw was evidence of modern day bug breaking. Buck breaking was a practice in the old days when the white slave masters would rape male Negro slaves. Pretty much use them as sex objects that still go on today all throughout the world in the white man's kingdom. You know, especially uh, people as they move up in this society. It's a lot of buck breaking going on. Now, we're going to play this clip a couple more times. And we're going to analyze everything to show that everything that's going on here is off. So let's let this clip roll. You're going to get another drunken hug tonight. I don't care what anyone says. You're getting a drunken hug. You too. You too. Drunken hugs are coming tonight. And that's why the brother said that these white billionaires ain't just hanging out with black rappers for no reason. Do these dudes look like they actually a fan of rap? Don't rap come off as masculine, aggressive. You want to, you know, take everybody woman, take everybody money. You want to shine. You want to stunt. You know, none of these people look like they really, they, they really like rap. But let's go back and let's listen to what was said first. You're going to get another drunken hug tonight. I don't care what anyone says. You're getting a drunken hug. Oh. He said, you're getting a drunken hug tonight. You're getting a drunken hug tonight. All right, listen again. You're going to get another drunken hug tonight. I don't care what anyone says. You're getting a drunken hug. You too. You too. Drunken hugs are coming tonight. So why is it a bunch of men in a private jet laughing, giggling, talking about being drunk and hugging each other in the middle of the night? This is bug breaking. And these are your favorite rappers. You're going to get another drunken hug tonight. I don't care what anyone says. You're getting a drunken hug. You too. You too. Drunken hugs are coming tonight. She said, we had five girls. She'd be like, up, up. All y'all get in the shower. Mike. Man, Mike. <laughs> I'm going to come hug you right now. I'm coming to hug you. Big hug. Get out of the love each other. Then he's talking about, I'm going to come hug you right now, and we're going to love each other. Like, that's a little too flirty for me. You're going to get another drunken hug tonight. I don't care what anyone says. You get and then I analyzed this video on my phone before I did the lesson. So a couple things is off about this rapper right here. First of all, it's a private jet full of men. It ain't no women on a jet. Why do you got a blanket out? When I was in the world, wherever I was at, when it was only men, you know, in the building, when it was only men in the sitting, rather we was drinking, smoking, pre-gaming, there was no blankets out. If you cold, you better man up or you better go home. It wasn't no blankets out. Even now, none of my homies better not pull a blanket out 
while we chilling. And yeah, sound crazy. Don't nobody put a blanket out around me talking about they cold. Better man up. And then he got his feet propped up on the bench, on the seat, whatever he's sitting on. And then as we look at him giggle, he got his feet up. He got a blanket. He got another man right across from him, another man right beside him. You know, when I was in the world doing whatever I was doing, you know, and there's other men sitting on the couch, maybe it's a table with chairs, it's a futon. I didn't put my feet up on the couch. My shoes wouldn't even be off. I kept my shoes on and I kept my feet on the ground. So that what? That I was always 10 toes down. So that what? I could be any, I could be ready for whatever. My feet is already on the ground. If I got to stand up to somebody real quick, defend myself. If I got to escape, if I got to flee, if I got to run. You know, my feet is already on the ground. You know, whether I'm standing up or sitting down, even when I'm sitting down, it's like I'm still standing up because my feet on the ground. He got his feet propped all up on the seat. Then he tucked under a blanket. Then I can bet you that his shoes is off. You know, that's a little too comfortable and a little too relaxed. Now, it's nothing wrong with being comfortable, relaxed around your kin, around your family, people that are like brothers, but that's a little too relaxed. Even around my own people, you know, my own brothers, I'm not putting my feet on the couch. That, that's just weird. Now, what if everybody wanted to put their feet on the couch? You look like it's a bunch of women in a room. And then if you look at them. I don't care what anyone says. You're getting a drunken hug. You too. You too. Drunken hugs are coming tonight. Drunken hug tonight. I don't care what anyone says. He's talking about drunken hugs in the middle of the night. And he all googly eyed. You know, this look like a girl that's laughing at her crush. You know, a girl that got a crush on a certain man and just everything that man say make her laugh. That's what it look like is going on right here. Ain't nothing that funny that they talking about. But it gets worse. Um, I actually, I got some pictures that we about to go into now of this event, this party that they getting ready for. I got some pictures, which has been floating around the Internet. So I don't know what this party is called, but it's pretty much these white billionaires and all the so-called Negro rappers, you know, they be at this party. Couple things in mind. It's an all male party. There's no women and is there's no women attending that party. All men, no women. All right. So if it was a bunch of rappers having a party, I could get that. You know, like minded men probably similar back uh, backgrounds but who are these random white billionaires that nobody know at the party with the so-called black rappers well let's put up these pictures all right see i guess that's a drunken hug you got a sandwich you got two white billionaires on the outside you got a so-called black rapper in the middle the same one that was googly eyed on the airplane same one that had his shoes off. Same one that had his feet propped up on the seat. Same one that was snuggling under a blanket with a bunch of men around. Still looking googly-eyed. You know, cheesing from ear to ear. Ain't nothing normal about this. Okay, you, you, let's say there was somebody you care for. Why is the other one hugging you from the back? What is really going on? And real men don't even hug like this. You know, it might be a quick, strong hug, like you're throwing the hook and you and you and you and you giving a handshake real quick, and that's about it. But this dude Michael, he one of these billionaire Edomites. Let's look at the caption to the picture. So somebody said, cuz long night. With the shame face. Long night with the shame face. 
Then after that, it reads, long is the biggest understatement I have ever heard. Long is the biggest understatement. So they pretty much saying the word long is not even the, the correct term to describe the night that they had. Now we can see five people in the picture. They are men. Ain't no women in the background. They look like they on a private island, private setting somewhere. So why is the night so long that you had to put a shame face with all these men? You know, when me and my bros in the world, we never said like, man, that was a long night. We'd be like, man, that was a crazy night. You know, I'm still effed up. Hey, I'm still drunk. I'm trying to sober up. Stuff like that. We never used the phrase long night. When somebody say it was a long night, that means you was enduring something. You had to endure something. So what did these men endure all night? All right, so we're going to go to the next picture. Hey, getting hugs from a, from a, from the back again. You know, not to be too graphic or but I we can already assume you know where this is going to be taken to. Rather be a bed, a couch, a private room in a private party somewhere in the mansion assuming the same position. And you still see only men in the background. And nobody better not grab me like this. I don't care how long we knew each other. You know, I'm I'm really not a touchy person. So don't nobody I don't I don't even play. I don't even play I don't even play wrestle or play fight with my homies. I see grown men doing that. Slap boxing, they tussling, they grabbing each other, hitting each other and running. I don't do none of that. As a matter of fact, let me go back to the uh, caption on this one real quick. So it was really no major caption, but you see, this this stuff is all off in the spirit. All right, here go another. Hey, you see, all uh, all uh, all uh, uh, men in the background. Um, but anyways, what's going on here? This he got his neck cocked to the side, like he dreaming. Look into the eyes of another man. This is not a picture perfect moment. This picture should not have been taken. But, you know, one can argue that this is not that bad. Well, we may or may not let this one slide, but we're going to get to the next picture. All right. Nah. This raises suspicion. Now, what's going on here? They both got their arms around each other necks like they about to lock lips. Looking into one another eyes like they daydreaming about being inside one another. And this is just a, a moment. What happened before? What happened after? What happened later that night? Assuming these people are drugged out and drunk, giving drunken hugs all night. Where did they sleep at? Who did they sleep with? What was that long night with the shame face that they was talking about in the first picture? What what really went on? Case closed. This the same Edomite. Which one? Right here? Hugging on dude from the back? This 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 is the same Edomite. Now see this proves it. It's that all white party. It's all men, black rappers, white billionaires. And not to mess up anybody's vision, but if you look at his pants, they just cut off in the back. From the front, they would look normal. So if you took a picture from the front, it would look like a normal pair of pants. But somebody caught a back shot of them. You know, with a stinking butt all out. But let's look at the caption going back. Big thanks to everyone who joined us. It wasn't nobody but men at this party. So big thanks to all the men. Hope you are hurting less than I am today. LOL. What the heck is supposed to be hurting? You know, 
on these men and it was just a party full of men. Like what really went on? What's hurting? Like see me and my homies, we'd be like, man, I'm still effed up. Like, man, I got a headache. Or we'd be like, man, I'm still drunk. Or we might be like, man, I'm trying to sober up still. So again, hope you're hurting less than I am today. LOL in all serious seriousness. It's an honor and a privilege to bring together so many then the rest is cut off. So it's an honor and a privilege to bring together so many men. Because they're the only people that was at this party. And for some reason, all the men in attendance woke up hurting. They woke up sore. And same caption right here. For some reason, all these men woke up sore. So I just know what everyone on. It was a bunch of blood and a bunch of dookie that was spilt that night. And these rappers that y'all women idolize, they soft. These ain't no real men. Women idolize these rappers. All these rappers that play tough, they play aggressive, they play like they the man. No, they not the man. They eat a mite daddy is the man. They slave master, that's the man. And not like a real man in a sense, but still it nasty. But Proverbs 3 and 31, envy thou, not the oppressor. Who's our oppressor? The so-called white man. That's the reason these rappers hanging with these billionaires. They want what the billionaires got. And what is that? Money and more money. That's why it says, envy thou, not the oppressor. Do not envy your oppressor. Don't desire the things that he has. If he got a certain status, a certain reputation, uh, money, material wealth, don't desire that stuff. It's for them to have at the moment. It's not meant for us to have it. Because if you want what your oppressor has, you're going to have to do the things that your oppressor do <clears throat> or you're going to have to do the things that your oppressor make you do and a lot of times Esau Edom um, being crooked being perverse being profane he's going to make you do abominable shameful wicked things that's why it says envy doubt not the oppressor and choose none of his ways because if you want what he got, you're going to have to do what he did to get it. And it's the saying that I heard coming up in the truth. For every fortune that is made, a crime is committed. Yeah, so for every fortune that is made, something shameful is done. So don't choose none of his ways. You know, Esau, tell our people, if you want to be successful, if you want to be rich, if you want to be somebody... All you got to do is work hard like I do. All of us been working hard all of our lives and we ain't got nowhere. So that tells you working hard ain't the answer. Or Esau will tell you if you got some talents, whether it's music, cooking, dancing, to use your talents and you will end up big. Well, we the most talented people in the earth, but most of us end up nowhere. So it's not your talents or Working hard or being smart that gets you promoted in this society is doing abominable, shameful, wicked things behind closed doors. It's choosing the way of your oppressor that gets you promoted in this society overall. So again, it be thou, not the oppressor, and choose none of his ways because it's who you know. First of all, and then it don't stop there. It ain't just who you know, it's what you do with who you know. Because these billionaires, they're not going to just give you no money and give you all this stuff free of charge. They're going to require something. They're going to require some form of payment. You, we, we, we can't pay the billionaires. We come into them for money to begin with. So the stuff they usually going to require from you it's usually going to be something sexual, something degrading, or maybe drinking blood, 
baby sacrifice, sacrificing a family member, it, it can go to that end as well. But if he not thou oppressor, don't desire none of the things that he have. Because once you envy your oppressor, when you desire what your oppressor has, you're going to follow in his ways. For the forward is an abomination to the Lord, but his secret is with the righteous. So when you choose the ways of your oppressor, you're going to turn your heart from following the ways of Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shah overall. Which the Lord not going to have us doing none of this stuff to follow him, but your oppressor will. So when you turn from the Lord, when you turn from Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shah, any and everything is on the table. Any and everything is possible. No telling where you're going to end up. So it's best to stay with, stay with, stay in his word. <clears throat> and we're going to get some scripture showing why you should not choose none of the ways of your oppressor. So we're going to go to the book of Sirach, um, chapter 13, verse 1. He that toucheth pitch shall be defiled therewith. What's pitch? Um, if I remember correctly, pitch is tar. You know, that black, sticky substance. So again, he that touches touch of pitch shall be defiled therewith. What's the best way to explain this? So a lot of our, I know me, I hate wearing bright colors. I hate wearing all white. And you, those who've worn all white before, you know that when you wear all white or bright colors, you know, any and everything could get you dirty. You know, you try your best to not touch nothing that may be dirty, that may be dusty. Hey, cause one wrong move is going to rub off on you. So again, he that touch of pitch shall be defiled therewith. So if you touch something unclean, you're going to become unclean. If you choose the ways of your oppressor, you're going to be likened unto your oppressor. And he that hath fellowship with a proud man shall be like unto him. That's the point. That's what it means when it says he that touch of pitch shall be defiled therewith or unclean. So whoever you have fellowship with, you're going to be like him. He that hath fellowship with a proud man shall be like unto him. He that fellowship with a rich man shall be like unto him. Now, rich don't sound like a bad thing, but that's the point. He that fellowship with a rich man. That's why these black rappers are hanging with these white billionaires. They like, hey, these men rich. Let me hang with them. Well, what did the scripture say? Don't even your oppressor. Don't choose none of his ways. What else did it say? He that touch of pitch shall be defiled therewith. Your oppressors are profane and dirty. So if you mingle with them, you're going to become profane and dirty. Most of your oppressors, most of these rich men are gays. So he may be rich, but he also gay. So let's that's, that's switch out a few words on this. And he that fellowship with a gay man shall be like unto him. So if you fellowship with a proud man, with a gay man, with a profane man, his ways are going to end up rubbing off on you. That's why the scriptures say, don't envy your oppressor and don't choose none of his ways because his ways are going to rub off on you. Why? Because he that touch something unclean is going to become unclean. In other words, you're going to be likened unto him. Sirach 13 and 2. Burden not thyself above thy power while thou livest. So again, burden not thyself above thy power while thou livest. What does this mean? Let's continue reading. Have no fellowship with one that is mightier and richer than thyself. So you shouldn't be hanging out and fellowshipping with somebody that's out of your league. See, the world teach you to do that. If you want to be rich, get rich friends. The scriptures say, don't envy your oppressor. Don't choose none of his ways. Because who you fellowship, fellowship with is who you're going to be like. And then the scripture said, you know, 
Don't fellowship with nobody that's mightier or richer than yourself. Let's continue reading. For how agree the kettle and the earthen pot together? So again, for how agree the kettle and the earthen pot together? So if I'm correct, the kettle may be something metal and the earthen pot would be something made out of dirt, clay. What's the significance of that? For if the one be smitten against the other, it shall be broken. So the Lord gave an analogy that pretty much if you got something that's that's metal, metal is mightier than clay. So again, don't fellowship with nobody that's mightier or richer than, than thyself. Because if you take the one that's mightier and richer, you know, a stronger material and you smite it or bang it against the other one, it's going to be broke. So again, for if the one be smitten against the other, it shall be broken. And who is the one that's smitten? It's the black rappers. They're the ones that's being smitten and they're the ones that's being broken. And what's being broken? They buttholes being broken. This is buck breaking. So again, have no fellowship with one that is mightier and richer than thyself. For how agree the kettle and the earthen pot together? For if the one be smitten against the other, it shall be broken. So these white billionaires, they smitten the black rappers. And now the black rappers are broken. Their manhood is taken. That's why they all woke up hurting the next morning. Again, looking at this caption. Hope you're all hurting less than I am today, LOL. Yeah. All night, they were smitten one another. The rich men have done wrong, and yet he threateneth with all. The poor is wronged, and he must entry also. So yeah, the poor was done wrong. And who was that? Who the poor? Is you black entertainers, you black rappers. You know, you envying your oppressor wanting some money. Hey, all the wrong getting done to you. You the one that's getting degraded. You the one that's selling your body. Just this is my, this is another form of prostitution. Yeah, they not walking on street corners, but this is male prostitution. Rich white Edomites pretty much buying so-called black rappers to have fun with them. You know, for a night. Or over the weekend. So much fun. That everybody wake up sore in the morning. You know. That the black rappers. Are being smitten against. And their bodies are literally being broken. So. You women look at these men. Like they the top of the line. These men are the bottom of the line. These men y'all consider fine. Sexy. Got all this stuff. Man, they broken inside. You know, they be at these parties getting broken into, having a manhood taken. They, they, they soft. They a bunch of nobodies. And you women idolize these men. But see, they ain't never fooled me. I always knew something was off. But we're going to continue with the scriptures. You know, y'all look up, see you women, y'all look up to these men, but these Edomites, they look down at these men. Who you women look up to, Esau the white man look down at them. And that's literal. And how are they looking down at them when they in the bed? When they got your rapper, favorite rapper on the bottom and, and, and they got the rich white Edomite on top of them, breaking them in. Mark 8 and 36, for what shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? So selling your soul is simple. You can sacrifice somebody you know, you know, something you wouldn't want the world to know, something you wouldn't want the most high to know. Or it could be selling your manhood, giving your body over to your oppressor. 
you know, or any other abominable, shameful acts. It's pretty much casting away your morals, denying yourself to follow after your oppressor so you can have what he has. So you gain all the women and it's not even all the women because you rappers, y'all may think y'all having fun with the women, but it's these Edomites who really having fun with the women. Hey, even the women that you men in the world, the women that y'all look up to, these Instagram models, Esau looking down on these models. Esau play with them for fun. So what's, so if he gain the whole world, if you gain money, cars, clothes, and hoes, but you lose your soul, you, you accomplish nothing. You got all this stuff, but you a fraud. You got all this stuff, but you got sugar in your tank. You sweet, your booty loose. How do you sleep with yourself? How do you live with yourself? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? So what So what will you take in exchange for your soul, for your manhood, for your loved ones? Because it's a saying in the, in the world that everything has a price. And that's the wisdom of the world. You know, it's a lot of stuff that ain't got no price with me. Like at work, I was talking to a young girl. And, you know, we be, we be, you know, joking around at work sometimes. And she said she wanted to ask me something. Which well, she young, so I get this funny to her. And she asked me, would I kiss another man for $10 million? I'm like, hell no. You know, I answered that quickly. It's no question. She was like, really? Not for $10 million? I'm like, no. I said, I'll tell you what I will do, though. I said, if somebody asked me that and they got $10 million, I'm going to rob them for their money. I'm not kissing nobody. I'm going to just take the $10 million from them. That's how I'm going to handle that. You know, she laughed at it, thought it was funny. But, you know, to, to you Americans, you know, you wanted to do anything for the right price. And this is just another perspective on what we just read about a man selling his soul, but gaining the whole world. Luke 9 and 25. For what is a man advantage if he gain the whole world and lose himself or be cast away? So, yeah, you lose yourself. You lose your manhood. You lose your sanity. You lose your mama because for some reason, all these rappers, they mama end up dead in a car crash or something. Kanye West, the baby, we ain't, ain't going to even go on. So, yeah, you gain all this stuff in the world, but now you ain't got nobody to share it with. You gain all this stuff in the world, but you are broken up. You broken up mentally for the things that you put yourself through and you broken up physically. Your butt is all broken. Your back is all broken in. And that's why when you see a lot of rappers as they blow up and get bigger, as they be in Hollywood or highly weird long enough, they get softer and softer and more and more feminine after time. That's them being violated repeatedly at these parties by these Edomite billionaires. You know, your singers, your movie stars, them, them men is not who you think they are. Them men are finished. Meaning the stuff that they did, there's no coming back from. You, There's no coming back from letting another man inside your butt. And that goes on on a, on a, on a very high level here in America. Leviticus 20 and 13, if a man also lie with mankind as he lieth with a woman, both of them have committed an abomination. These men have committed abominations. They shall surely be put to death. Their blood shall be upon them. These men got to be put to death. This is a sin that th there's really no coming back from. And, you know, for those who live this lifestyle, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai will forgive you and wipe away your sins if you come back with a sincere heart. But 
when I say there's no, when I say that there's no coming back from this, you know, in the ancient world and also in the kingdom, if you get caught doing this, you're getting put to death on the spot. There's no forgiveness. There's no coming back. Just to clarify that. And it's a shame that these men put on such a tough act. Women be passing out, having panic attacks. These men do the same thing a lot of you women do behind closed doors. But that's it for the lesson here. I went way longer than expected. Bukaha, y'all. Halal, y'all. Basimah, Shabbat, Shemrakakwadash. Till next time, Shalom.